Hi, this is uh, Steve Mackay. Um, doing a presentation on the testing and maintenance of electrical equipment with a focus on switchgear. Hopefully, uh, you can uh, follow what I'm saying, and um, hopefully, there's no problems with the audio. So let's move on. There's a lot of material here, so I'm just going to skim through and just look at the most important stuff. It's Steve McCarthy from Engineering Institute of Technology. Really, what we want to look here is just at the um, switchgear diagnostics testing and maintenance. I don't want to worry too much about the theory. All I really want to do is put out some of the key issues that you will have to know about with diagnostics testing and maintenance by looking at specific items of equipment. And so, a lot of slides, and you're welcome to take copies of the slides, but I'm just going to look at the key slides that I'm not going to go through each of them. So, topics we're just going to look at. Briefly, asset records. Very important to keep a record of your assets. Quick discussion about condition-based maintenance, the reliability centered maintenance, some of the uh, switchgear inspection methodologies, diagnostic techniques, and then principles of circuit breaker maintenance. So, lots of material and a very short time. So, we'll say the slides are available, the materials are available. So, obviously, asset registers are important. There's a sort of typical example of one. Condition-based maintenance, as you can see here, a relationship of the asset condition to time, um, as new over here, all the way down to failure down here. Uh, Reliability-centered maintenance um, is probably the more common one promoted. Failure mode effect analysis, or failure mode effects critical analysis, which is often used. A risk matrix, as you probably can remember from dim dark fast, dim dark dark fast. Risk is the probability of an occurrence of an event and the multiplied by the consequence of that event. So that's quite uh, important to multiply to here. That gives you the risk. So you've got here um, the probability from frequent to very improbable, all the way from catastrophic to negligible. So uh, for example, over here, negligible and improbable ranking, negligible uh, consequence, we see over here, of course, we've got frequent and catastrophic, well, of course, this you need to be very concerned about in the risk matrix. And so, I'm not going to worry too much about this. And just look at switchgear inspection methodologies, look at the health of insulation, wear and tear mechanical components, and obviously of the functioning of the breaker. Insulation deterioration is often due to excessive temperature, moisture, and of course, inevitable aging, which affects all of us. Accumulation of airborne dirt and um, excessive vibration or shock loading. Um, there's three components to the currents. Um, again, we can't worry too much about it. Capacitance, dielectric absorption, and reverse oil leakage current. Insulation test. Absorption curve, partial discharges occurring during the voltage cycle. Um, that analysis of the, of the recorded waveforms allows you to detect the following inside solid insulation between your conductor and solid insulation between insulating material on the ground, surface tracking, arcing, and sparking. Partial discharge monitoring. Um, Gives you a more accurate measurement by removing the short term variations in one to two hours. And permanent monitoring over up to three days gives you measurement of variations with load, component temperatures, and mechanical stress. Useful for old installations, so there's quite a lot of partial discharge activity. Continuous monitoring, you can look at long term trends, but you obviously can only really use it for expensive high value or strategically important installations. Watch discharge levels can be low all the way through to critical. Um, basically, the locations where you get um, partial discharge or internal fault in the VTs and PTs, voltage transformers, buzz byte support uh, insulators, cable terminations through bushings, and internal fault in the CTs, current transformers. Um, points where conducted medium or high voltage is close to earth metal, 
surface contamination, which is obviously a potential problem. Conductor under floating potential, not a bit. Uh, arcing contacts, so the circuit breaker, arcing and isolated contacts, and loose connections. So you could get a potential arc cache hazard there as well. Don't worry about that. There's handheld acoustic probes. Um, obviously, you need to take the equipment offline to do the testing. Here's a good example of cracked bushing. So the equivalent circuit, which uses the capacitance and the resistance to power each other. Uh, hand out to the vector. Don't worry about that. Here's the suggested limits for contact resistance for circuit breakers, which you can see in the slides. Um, here's a thermal grayscale image of an air brake disconnector. Trip coil monitoring. Um, Quite important to this. Most statistically, trip mechanisms and trip coils are responsible for most failures to operate. Obviously, you want to operate 100% of the time, and um, basically, you can often do to improper lubrication, shorter turns in the trip coil because the winding insulation is deteriorated over time, and obviously, faulty secondary wiring and secondary wiring contacts. These bearings. Effective latch mechanisms, rust, which is corrosion, and obviously due to the tradey, tradesman electrician doing some incorrect adjustment of the um, trip latch mechanism. Trip coil monitoring. Ideally, a circuit breaker should be speed tested when first installed. Circuit breaker should trip at 20% of battery voltage in case of a bus trip. Trip pulse normally only 500 milliseconds, and the trip circuit through the vision constantly checks the integrity of the trip circuit to make sure it's working, operating all the time. Uh, not going to worry about that. So all the slides. SF6 gas monitoring. Obviously very important with SF6 is that you have purity Otherwise, you've got a potential problem, and uh, purity can degrade due to the number one highly reactive oxygen. Oxygen is very reactive, moisture, and obviously acidity. Forming. Switch gear maintenance procedures, combination of generic requirements or specific requirements. We get specific bulletins from your good old. Circuit breaker manufacturer. Here's a typical example of generic maintenance. Lighting, safe exit from the substation, tools and equipment, safe working, environmental protection, protection from live LV equipment. Cleaning materials, obviously, make sure you only use approved by the manufacturer. Unit identification, make sure you're working on the right switch gear. Horrific how many times people get a bit confused. Canyonness, very important. Cleaning down oil filled switch gear. Obviously, avoid the ingress of moisture or uh, maybe mainly in a, a big issue in a very high humidity environment. And obviously, make sure you use the right solvents in case you damage insulation. Position indicators and oil level indicator windows, arc gaps, check gaps. Earth bonding continuity, shutters and lock the device and interlocks. You need to have a very good understanding of the interlock requirements. Uh, ventilation, functional tests, equipment high heating and lighting, lifting devices, equipment tools, stairs and test instruments, tripping and closing supplies, cable boxes, etc. Um, problems that may be found during switch gear maintenance are obviously inspect for keys, bolts, and um, inspect for wood operating rods, supports, for broken welds. Obviously, quite important. Um, on circuit, oil circuit breakers, look for contact burning. And obviously, if you do find that, you need to reshape or replace the contacts. And, um, Identified wood operating arms, absorb moisture and start to track across the surface. So it's, it's quite a, a, a 
onerous process, but very critical. Uh, inevitably, with oil switchgear, you see carbon or sludge. Check for that. Oil switchgear, look for burning erosion. And obviously, bushings and gaskets. Make sure they're always in good condition. Not replacing gaskets for necessary. Oil testing is an uh, art in itself, and um, you need to check for things such as oxidation um, of the oil, deterioration of the electric properties, transformer lifetime depends on operating temperature. The hotter it is, the shorter the life. Obviously, very critical to avoid embarrassing um, explosion with a transformer or failure of a transformer because it can bring a whole suburb or a plant out if you have a problem. Um, here's just a discussion of oil dielectric tests, tests of acidity, which can be a big problem with oil, uh, interfacial tension test. Um, Color, the lower the value, the better. Purities change the um, color of the oil. So obviously brown is not very good. Straw color, yellowish is very good. Specific gravity, uh, check that. Other tests are flash point, viscosity, ball point, and resistance trying to eliminate any contaminants or any degrade thing from where the oil was good. As far as switching your insulation is concerned, look at contact shutter safety mechanisms, phasing out. Uh, and then finally, the other topic which is quite important is fire protection substations. Uh, need to be legally maintained different ranges of putting out fires. Obviously, electric fires are a problem. You can't just use um, standard um, approach with putting out electric fire, and especially with oil involved. Obviously, you can't just use water either for putting out the fire. So, you need um, different kettle of fish. So that's just a brief discussion on. Um, let's go back to the original topic here. Testing and maintenance of electrical equipment with a focus on switchgear. So thank you very much. Slides give you a comprehensive uh, rundown. If you want more information, drop me a line. I'll be most happy to talk further. Thank you very much for attending this quick.